Hello, my name is David Malin, and I'm the instructor for Computer Science E1, Understanding Computers and the Internet at Harvard University's Extension School. You're watching one of our videos of the week. For more such videos or information about this course, visit us on the web at computerscience1.org. Enjoy the show. Hello. I'm Dan Armendariz, a TA for Computer Science E1. In other videos of the week, we talked about TCP IP and HTTP. But how do web servers actually work? Well, they use something called the client server model. Now, this isn't anything new to us. Whenever you go to a restaurant, it uses something very similar. You are the client, and they are the servers. You sit down, you open a menu, you tell them what you want, the server provides you with the food. Similarly, you request from the server, when you sit at your computer, you request from the server the page that you would like to see, and it serves it to you. So with this in mind, let's take a look at a URL, or a Uniform Resource Locator. Right here, I have a pretty standard URL. So I typed this in just a little while ago, and my web browser actually breaks it up into several different things. Right here, HTTP, this is called the protocol. Now there's more than just HTTP. There's HTTPS, which provides secure connections to uh, web pages. There's FTP for file transfer protocol, FTPS for secure file transfer protocol, MMS for Microsoft streaming. Uh, there's even an AIM protocol. There's many, many protocols. Um, but for the purposes of this video, we'll concentrate on HTTP. Next, we have the server. This is the address of the computer that your computer contacts when you try to access a web page. Now this can be google.com, it can be fas.harvard.edu, it can be microsoft.com, apple.com, there's a variety of servers, it all depends on the address. I recommend viewing our TCP IP video of the week for more information. Now after this, everything after the slash of the address is the resource. This is a particular web page on the server. Uh, it could be the index page, it could be a particular news page, it could also be if we happen to type in a search, it could be the address of the search page. So when you type this address into your web browser, it breaks it apart into the protocol, the server, and the resource. So the browser sends a request for this particular resource at this particular server. The server replies with the requested page. It sends it usually in a code known as HTML. Your browser takes this HTML and interprets it into the graphics and the text that we see on screen. So like many things on the internet, there is more than one way to serve a web page. You can have a package called Apache, which serves web pages, or you could also have a server package called IIS, produced by Microsoft. Now these two servers operate very differently, but they do have to abide by the standards. Your browser provides a standard request and both servers reply with a standard reply. It doesn't matter which server you're using, pretty much everything you do is logged by the server. When I request index.html, for example, from Google, it records my own IP address and the time that I requested it. So it knows basically which computer has requested which particular web page at a particular time. This can be a bad thing if you are a diehard Windows user and you don't want your family to see that you've been secretly looking up the new stuff from Apple.com. So I talked earlier about HTML, one of the standard ways that a server replies with a web page. But this is just a static page. There are other versions as well. You have CGI, uh, dynamic pages such as Perl or PHP. Uh, you can also serve other media types as I discussed before, which is one of, the, one of them is this video of the week. You can also have pictures, music, a variety of other things. So that's a quick overview of web servers. I'm Dan Armendaris. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Hello, I'm Dan Armendaris, a TA for Computer Science E1. You're watching one of our videos of the week. 
Now, in previous videos of the week, we've talked about several internet communication protocols. Well, no, we didn't. <laughs> How do web servers actually work? Hello, I'm Dan Armandaris. <laughs> Shoot, no, I'm just... <laughs> Maybe I should say somebody else's name. Hello, I'm Ray Diaz. <laughs>